Now, when we were young, we all did some stupid things. Crazy things that we're not particularly proud of. But not all of us ended up getting locked up for our sins. So, what happens to those that do take things a little bit too far and end up serving time for their problems? Thus is the theme of tonight's two stories, both from Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up, so you could send your stories to me, and I could read them all for you, and two absolute crackers, I have to say. Now, I want you all to join me around the campfire this evening. It's warm, mmm, there's hot cocoa on the go. Come in a bit closer, that's it, there you go. Now it's all time for you to sit back and relax with your cup of hot chocolate, and listen. Well, if you're reading this, my name is Derek. That's all I want to say. I'm a dangerous man. Someone you wouldn't like to be around. Whenever I'm around people, I have this urge to start a confrontation. I'm an aggressive type. And let's say I found my spot in an asylum for 30 years, or wouldn't have been in for that time. I strangled a man to death in a bar. Broke someone's face with a wine bottle. Killed someone with a knife. And then things started escalating from there. I was arrested. And we've been put away for what would have been a long time. And then I put myself into even bigger trouble as I tried to assault the officers that were apprehending me. Broke an officer's nose as I headbutted him as hard as I could. Then tried to shove the other one off of me. I grabbed one of the guns... Shot the guy with a busted nose in the chest two times. The officer behind me shot me with a taser. As I collapsed to the ground, convulsing and thrown into the car as the officer started speaking into his comms, rubbing his eyes, distressed. He shakes his head and gets into the car, waiting until someone came by to retrieve the officer and escort me to the precinct. Weeks later, I ended up in an asylum where I'd spend the better part of ten years in prison with other unstable cellmates. Some aggressive like me, and some just too psycho. I heard these stories about asylums. I always thought it was a joke. Oh, creepy atmosphere, weird shit going down, and a breed of people that you wouldn't believe. Well, I've seen crazy people here, dressed in straitjackets and screaming in some weird language. I wasn't scared of them. I would have liked to shut them up so I wouldn't have to hear them every day and night. Well, I haven't seen some of this weird shit yet. Well, not that any of it would bother me anyway. I have a strong stomach. Most of that came from being aggressive over the years. Grew up with parents that didn't care much about me at all. Didn't care that I'd have a bad day at school as some kid or bullies beat me up. And if I did try to get their attention, they'd threaten me. So I had to learn to stop being so scared, so helpless. And I guess that ended up biting me later on. Now, in prison, the way I'd pass my time would be working out in my cell. Or staring at the freaking ceiling. I wasn't allowed out of my cell. I was deemed too dangerous. I figured it was better that way. At least I had that. It went on like this for a long time. But then one prisoner checked in that actually made me wonder what he'd done to get into this asylum. He was quiet. Calm. And he was never let out of his cell. Oh, he was a weird man, I'll tell you that. One of the prisoners across my cell, or well, next to it, had cut himself with a knife in the gut and died on the spot. Now, this new prisoner, I'll call him Steve, took his place. I'd see him every day, hunched over, his hands together, just staring at the floor. He only moves when it's time to eat. I don't notice him sleeping either, well, from what I could tell. He just sits there, motionless. It weirded me out a bit. There was something different about him. One day I decided to shout at him through my cell, asking what he's in for. He just looks at me, blankly. His eyes were a little odd. They never blinked. And they looked like they've seen some shit. 
He shakes his head. No. And then just stares at the floor again. What the hell did that mean? I decided to ask again. More demanding now. And he didn't move this time. Well, over time I tried to ignore him. But he was just so out of place. He never threatened anyone. And he never spoke. What the hell did this guy do? I shook my head and just tried to focus on push-ups. As the days went on, Steve just sat there, looking at the ground like a freaking psycho. Someone tries to talk to him, like I did, and he didn't respond. And this led to more people talking. And then he put his hands to his lips, shushing everyone as he spoke finally. But we still didn't know what the hell was going on. He muttered something weird, something none of us understood. One of them shouted back, What does he mean? Then he just proceeded his daily routine. The prisoner who shouted had finally had enough and banged on the bars as he shouted at him, asking what his deal is and why he's in here, why he never answers back, why he's looking at the ground like some sicko. Steve must have been pissed since he then directed his gaze towards the prisoner and has never turned away since then. He was starting to freak some of us out. And one day during mealtime, this other prisoner started coughing. It sounded like it was serious. And then I saw blood outside his cell. And then some more. The guards dropped the tray and opened the cell, trying to tend to the prisoner. Steve then directed his gaze back to the ground, unfazed by what had just unfolded. Well, he was dragged out of his cell, coughing up more blood. He was taken to the infirmary, and we didn't hear back from him for hours. A lot of us took a bet that he probably died in there. God, what the hell had Steve done? Well, I tried not to look at him from there on out. But now, Every night, he whispers to himself. He never speaks during the day. It's honestly freakier that he talks now. Another prisoner was dragged out of his cell, coughing up blood like the first one did. But this time, his limbs started to contort beyond their limits, and he died right there. Steve never acknowledged any of this. Gee, this guy is a psycho starting to see why he might have been put in here. It's like these people are possessed or some shit. Granted, I never liked anyone here, but this is getting too weird for my tastes. I've always enjoyed breaking bones, but honestly, there's nothing quite like someone throwing their arms back and bones popping out. Yeah, I've broken bones, but I've never seen anything like this before. The guards are doing rounds around ourselves, concerned about what's going on here. They speak into their comms every couple minutes, reporting their findings. Nothing out of place so far. One of the prisoners speaks up and tells the guards, That SOB is crazy. God, get us out of here. Guards don't acknowledge him. Moments later, another prisoner mentions the crazy prisoner. Then another one speaks up. The two guards look at each other, whispering. They've seen the prisoners and how on edge they are. And then something none of us could explain happens. Something grabs one of the guards from behind and starts to suffocate him. The guard grabs his throat as he starts to lose oxygen, his eyes turning black, his arms contorting. He dies on the spot, and the other guard calls it in. But immediately after... The dead guard's tongue lashes out and grabs the other one by the throat, thrashing him around. Everyone backs up in their cells, including me now. Everyone is shouting in horror. The dead guard's limbs snap back in place, and it's like something is controlling him. He stands to his feet with his crooked legs, and then we hear a loud snap as the other guard is slammed onto the ground. The guard's tongue had snapped the other one's neck and then broken his spine. Well, probably broke more than that. The 
as Asgard's tongue continues to hang out, long enough to touch the ground, tainted with dried bloodstains and vomit. The guard looks at a random prisoner and rips off the bars from the prison cell with his tongue and proceeded to do the most terrible thing. The guard's tongue goes through the prisoner's ear, extends through the other end, goes into one of his nostrils, and rips out his eye sockets as his head falls in a disgusting mess. The screams would have kept me warm at night if I hadn't looked at what had just happened. God, this must be what hell is like. <laughs> right then, I begin to have second thoughts about my life choices, about the things I've done to get myself here, about how I could be next. Now, don't take this as me wussing out. Take it as a wake-up call or a death wish. I look at Steve, and that sick bastard is just rocking back and forth, smiling. <sighs> I hope he's happy. Well, I hope that monster rips him apart. Then, the monster grows two more tendrils on his back, ripping open his chest and pulling out his heart. It's not beating anymore. The blood and guts spill over the floor as the guard begins to scream in an unhuman cry. I don't know if it was happy, sad or angry, but I'll be damned if it wasn't hurt in the slightest. Oh, maybe this is my damnation after all I've done. The guard starts to transform as his face begins to give way, his mouth taking place on his face with hundreds of teeth, blood spilling out through him. His eye sockets rolling around on the floor, turning into a black blob and just sticking to the ground. God, this is beyond insane. The creature's arms turn into pinches with spikes, sticking out around his appendages. They look like bones. It can't be, but everything just seems so bizarre now. This has to be a nightmare or some shit. Something Steve did. This can't be real. The creature's back tendrils shoot at Steve's cell, rip out the bars, and pull him towards it as they bond together in one body, growing two smaller arms at the sides of his ribcages, ripping out two of the previously mentioned bones to use as weapons. And then the creature looks at me growling menacingly. I suppose this is it. I suppose this is how I die. There's no way I can fight that thing. Maybe I deserve this. But at least I'll try to take it like a man. But then guards come and are frozen in fear as they see this abomination down the hallway. It turns its head backwards and sees them, laughing grimly. A guard opens the cells on this floor and tells everyone to run as fast as they can. None of us protested, and we all ran like hell. But I decided to look back. The guards start firing, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. The monster's back tendrils grab the ribcage weapons and then propel towards the other guards. I decided I wasn't going to look back anymore. But then I saw some prisoners getting grabbed by their ankles, falling flat on their faces and screaming on their way back to the creature. I didn't want to look back. I just kept running. Oh, I couldn't shake the sound of bones cracking, the sound of silent screams, only for something else to take its place. Jeez, they're all being transformed. I just want to get out of here. I kick on the door to get out. But it requires a key. Oh, damn, I think to myself. I kick the door in frustration and decide to beat on it until something happens. There wasn't much else I could do. And then someone with an exposed ribcage comes up against the door, banging on it, trying to get to me. It's going to give soon. I look back and see dismembered bodies littered across the hallway. Oh, what a terrifying sight. The monster has grown in size. Heads from the prisoners seemingly a part of the abomination now, but still screaming. Their screams are that of terrible pain and fear. Their eyes pulled open by the tendrils, watching terror unfold. Tears falling down their eyes, 
blood on the body where the heads lie, arms sticking out of the morbid figure. And the figure has developed a sort of spider-like lower body, quickly coming my way. I look back, and the monster busts down the door, still trying to get me through the glass. But as soon as it breaks through the glass, I finally manage to push the door aside and try to keep running. The impact of the door, and being slammed against the hard floor, hurts like hell. But whatever it takes, I have to keep running. My heart is pounding in my chest. My head's racing with thoughts about what could come if I get caught by that thing. My adrenaline is at an insane high. And it only gets worse as I see more dismembered bodies and monsters wandering the asylum. Butchering so many people. Run. I think to myself every time I see a body, or go on cut in pieces still crawling, and don't stop until you exit the asylum. But shortly after, I get pinned down by a monster. It tries to bite my head off, but I grab a nearby chunk of rock that was broken off from a wall and swing it at the creature. It barely does anything against it. The creature then thrusts a blade into my abdomen, making me scream. I then feel something crawling inside, and I try to hit the abomination in an exposed part of its body and the side of its head. I hit it as hard as I can, digging my thumb into its eye. The monster screams as its head bobs and weaves, trying to shake me off. It then thrusts the blade in my stomach even deeper in anger, and I can't let go. I dig my thumb into his other eye, and if I had a third thumb, well, I would shove that into an eye too. Resting in his mouth with a razor-sharp tongue coming out of the center. I try to dig my thumbs in deeper into the eye sockets, tightening my grip around his head. Then I hear a loud, booming, bone-chilling scream behind me. And I look up to see the beast with a dozen heads has increased in size yet again. A gluttonous spider demon making its way towards me, with multiple screams all in unison. I turn back to the monster on top of me, as a tendril emerges from its back, and tries to gouge out my eye. But I can see it's in a lot of pain. Finally, it collapses on top of me, and I try to shove it off. I can barely stand up, but I have to. I feel something crawling inside my intestines, and it rushes towards my brain. Oh, I can feel it digging into my brain. And then, I don't remember much else afterwards. It's like I blacked out or something. I find myself in the middle of an empty road. Bodies everywhere. Or, should I say, limbs are scattered around the pavement. Chaos everywhere. Maybe that thing took over me and I just ran away. But, oh, screw it, I'm just glad I got out. I don't know where I am, or what I am now. Maybe I'm some possessed monster. How much of this did I cause? Well, that I don't want to know. I'm writing this down so someone can read this and maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe explain this better than me. I'm spending my days now in an abandoned house somewhere, by myself. I don't know how many days have passed, and I don't care. I just want to be alone, to contemplate what happened in that freaking asylum, and wonder how things have changed. But one day, my isolation is disturbed, as a little girl, maybe 17, comes into my house with a note I'd written down. She doesn't show fear when she meets me. She just hands me the note back. We have to do something about these monsters, she remarks coldly. But I can't do it alone. About a month after turning 18, I was arrested and sentenced to 120 days in jail. The county jail here is massive. As big, if not bigger, than a lot of prisons. After about a month of hard labor on an inmate work farm, well, I got into some trouble. At the time, and 
even still to this day. The reason for that trouble is well, quite comical, but well, that's a story for another time. Well, turns out I was found guilty at my DH, disciplinary hearing, and was sentenced to 30 days in solitary confinement. Yeah, solitary confinement, well, the box, is a rough place. It's where they hold the truly mentally insane. I saw things in there that were completely horrible. Grown men shitting and rubbing it all over their bodies, covering their cell walls with it, chanting, saying the same thing over and over and over, never eating and never quiet. Screaming fills the dorms day and night. Well, I had a really tough time adjusting in there well, for the first two weeks. I wound up getting into a fight with one of the officers. I can't really remember why, but he was a dick. Anyway, so, some time into my third week inside solitary, I got one of my twice-weekly seven-minute showers. As I'm walking out of the shower, which is on the second story of cells, I see another inmate being brought into solitary as well. He looked like your typical skinhead. He had really short hair and a really long beard, and as soon as I saw him... I just felt the presence of evil. As we passed each other, as I was going down and him up, I casually say, oh, Welcome to hell, you know, jokingly. He just laughed and kept on walking. Later that night, I'd say around the 3am count, where the guard walks through to make sure no one is hanging, I'm sitting up against the big metal roll door on my cell, Utilizing the little bit of light that comes through the hole in the door, where they push the food through to feed us like animals. Oh, it wasn't long until I heard him. The sounds of a madman screaming in the dark. One, two, three, four, five, six. I come to shed the blood of the innocent. One, two, three, four, five, six. At this point, I had no idea who it was. Like I said... A lot of insane people in there with me. And then again. I am Satan Spawn. I'm here to do the devil's work. I tried to ignore it, but that was impossible. He started speaking in tongues, and I'm pretty sure Latin at some point. It was definitely a weird language, and I had no idea what he was saying. After a few minutes of him going off, proclaiming his love for the devil, all the other crazies started getting excited, trashing their cells, screaming, just going crazy. A couple of the not-so-insane, but still pretty freaked up and morbid, well, if you ask me, well, some of these inmates started getting really mad. One of the inmates just a few cells down from me started to yell back, Hey, shut the fuck up! Kill yourself, you frickin' devil worshipper. Well, all kinds of stuff. Well, the guy, Snake, I later found out, was just sentenced to 15 years for burglarizing a church and burning it down. Pretty dark. But when one of the other inmates asked why, he said, I did it for Satan. Well, in the midst of him yelling out satanic shit that, at this point, scared the hell out of me, well, because I believe in higher powers and evil entities. Well, a jail cell is a bad place to be with old El Diablo. So, while all that's going on, the inmate a few cells down from me, who also just got a 15 for attempted murder, tells him he should kill himself. At this point I put my book up and hid it because, well, that was considered contraband in solitary, and I was now listening intently. Snake yells back to the other inmates. I would kill myself, but there's no way to do it in here. The other inmate a few cells down explains to him that if he rips his bedsheets into long strips, he'd be able to tie them together and create rope. The other inmate then tells him to get on the top bunk, put his feet behind his back, and take the rope and tie it from his feet to the front of his waist into a tight knot, then tie a short rope around his neck and to the highest point and just, well, roll off the bunk. Snake thanked him, and then got quiet. 4 a.m. rolls around. The officer makes his rounds, counting every head in the pot. When he approaches Snake's cell, 
I knew he didn't have time to make the rope yet, and I wasn't really sure if he was even really going to do it or not. Now, when the officer gets to Snake's cell, I hear him start talking to him. Hey, I'm going to kill myself. And a bunch more gibberish about the devil. Now, most everybody knows exactly what is supposed to happen when an inmate tells a CO he's going to kill himself. The person should immediately be put in cuffs and taken to suicide patrol, where you're given a paper gown and sit in a glass box with someone watching you move, usually for three days. But this did not happen. Instead, the officer laughed and said, I'll be back in an hour to cut you down, and turned and walked away. I was speechless. I really couldn't believe he actually did that. And I was waiting for him to come back in the dorm like, <laughs> just kidding. But that didn't happen. No, the officer never came back. The whole next hour, Snake was silent. He didn't make a sound that I could hear from my cell. Although, I'm sure the things his neighboring inmate heard was something out of an exorcist movie. The next count, 5 a.m. If I'm not mistaken... It was shift change, because it was a blonde female officer who I hadn't seen all night. She goes around from cell to cell, checks the whole bottom row, then heads up the stairs. I'm inside my cell. I can't see anything up on the second story, but I knew exactly when she got to his. Hey, get down from there, she screams. Open cell 34. I couldn't believe it. Oh my god. He did it? I shouted from behind my iron door in complete shock. The cell door rolls open. His cell is directly above mine. I hear his lifeless body hit the floor above me, even through the thick concrete, when the officer cut him down. Officers by the dozens come running in. The sergeant and general along with paramedics and nurses. The paramedics had a stretcher and a portable EKG machine. Watching from my tray flap, I see a few paramedics bring Snake's dead, buck-naked body slowly down the steps, hooked to this machine with wires running to his chest, with oxygen being pumped into his lungs by force, but solid, flat lines across the screen. Snake was dead, gone from this world. Or so I thought. It's quiet now. More quiet than any other night I'd spend in a solitary nightmare down in that dungeon of darkness. The kind of quiet that makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. As much as I've been hoping for just one peaceful night of sleep, I didn't like this. The realization of what had just happened... Settled throughout the dorm like a thick blanket of fog on an eerie moonless night. Not more than fifty feet from the furthest inmate, a clearly deranged man had taken his own life. Now, I've never really been able to remember my dreams. I'm not sure if that's for the better or worse, but I just can't. But I'll never forget the nightmares that started that night. I awakened on my cot, inside my cell, and the door was open. It was quiet, almost like I'd woken up in a Freddy Krueger movie. As I stepped outside my cell, the jail that surrounded me with over 1,200 inmates was empty, although I was not alone. I felt it, like eyes burning holes in the back of your head. Whispers from the shadows in the corners of the cell. I knew I was being watched. As I walked up the steps to the second story, getting closer and closer with each step, to the spot where the devil himself was just disguised, like a wolf in sheep's clothing, I feel the presence of evil grow stronger. With every inch, I'm telling myself to go back, but for some reason, I can't. Something is drawing me closer. As I reach the top of the steps, I make my way over to the cell where evil seemed to be lurking. It was just waiting for the chance to snap up yet another helpless soul. 
The forces of evil were so strong, I was trembling in fear. More scared than a kid taking out the trash in the middle of the night. My fight or flight response kicked in, and as I turned to run, I heard his voice. Now frozen in fear, regretting ever getting out of my cell, he emerges from the shadows. Covered in fire, eyes black as night. I can feel them piercing my soul. Wanting to scream, but paralyzed by fear, nothing came out. After just a split second, that felt like an eternity, I broke out of the immense shock and ran as fast as I could in the other direction, feeling like the evil forces were trying to pull me back. I lunged down the stairs, collapsing at the bottom. Knowing the demon was hot on my tail, I picked myself up as quickly as I could. Turning the corner, frantically heading for the safest place I could think of, I ran as fast as I could into my cell, slamming into the back wall. Turning around, I see the devil heading right for me. Just as he's about to enter my cell, the door slams shut. The demon hits the door with full force and bursts into flames. Bam! I wake up. I sprung from a dead sleep, soaked in an icy sweat, with my heart pounding. My almost sinister scream was the only noise in the still, dead, quiet dawn. Even though I was awake, the feeling of evil was still overly present. The next morning, internal affairs came into the pod and asked for everybody's attention. As with any death inside a state institution, they were conducting an investigation. They asked the whole pod if anyone had anything to say about the incident. And without hesitation, well, knowing the dangers of being labelled a jail snitch, I yelled out, I have something to say. They opened my cell to bring me out for questioning. After putting cuffs on me, and as soon as I stepped out, I felt that very same presence of evil, like it was waiting for me. But why me? Was what I was feeling real? Or was solitary confinement messing with my mind? I told the investigators exactly what had happened, about telling the officer he was going to kill himself, and about the officer's reaction. They were shocked. I went back to my cell as fast as I could, whereas normally I'd utilize every second out of that concrete hell as best I could. But something was different. It was much darker now. A much higher sense of something bad waiting around the corner. My cell was my safe place. The next morning, breakfast comes in. It's 6am. The sergeant that I just happened to rat out is delivering my tray, but instead of sliding it through the tray flap, he starts opening my cell door. Oh, shh, this isn't good. I say while my cell door rolls open. The sergeant, of substantial stature, standing there in the doorway with my breakfast tray in his hand. I'm expecting the worst already, so I jump up, Towel wrapped around my fist, one foot against the back wall. Yeah, I'm ready to pounce. Looking right in my eyes, he says, You're lucky I don't kill you. You take one step inside my cell, and I'm knocking you out, I scream. He slams my tray on the ground. Food goes everywhere. Tch, clean that shit up, he screams as my cell door closes. Ah, oh, damn it, I scream back, knowing I wouldn't eat until lunch now. But I'm still glad he didn't try to kill me. I never did see him again, so I'm guessing he lost his job. I never did ask any questions because the investigators were adamant that this was the kind of thing I wanted to keep quiet about. Although I didn't have to worry about the ex-sergeant coming to kill me in my sleep anymore. The nightmares continued. Each time with a demon getting closer and closer to catching me. So did the sense of evil lurking just outside that iron door. 
the one that seemed to keep me safe. I wound up sitting in that solitary cell for 66 long days before I was released. As soon as I left that place, it was like a weight had been lifted. The nightmare stopped. And still, to this day, I believe that evil entity is roaming that pot. God help the poor soul sitting in that very cell where his body hung, slowly squeezing the life out of him. So, an intriguing pair of stories for you there, both very similar in theme, both kind of weird and wonderful, or so I thought. Well, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments section below the video, and as ever, I will do my best to reply and get involved in the chat. Okay, I've been doing the premiere thing recently, um, premiering the video just an hour or so before, and um, I don't know, tell me what you think. Do you like it? I'm going to do it again this evening. You might even have participated, so just let me know what you think. Seems to be going okay, but what would I know? Well, anyway, that's enough for me for one evening. Of course, I will be back again on Friday with another story for you. You'll join me, won't you? Yes, of course you will. Until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>